So is that for a base off a photo or a base off of a No, because in the gallery I'm like, is that like the original anamorphic thing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, their VR efforts. 
Uh, and they're working on a VR operating system based on Android. It'll be used for all the self-contained uh, VR headsets as well as uh, phone-based VR. They have an internal cardboard plus plus project, which will lead to uh, many more phones being able to do what the Gear VR does right now. And they're planning to develop, uh, rumored to be developing, uh, some mobile VR hardware uh, that won't require a phone. It'll be completely self-contained. So what's happened since our last meetup in November? Well, a bunch of stuff. The consumer version of the Gear VR went on sale and immediately sold out, uh, which is great. Uh, Samsung has now announced that VR being one of their major focuses going forward. Uh, Mattel Viewmaster, which is powered by Google Cardboard, was released and sold very well. Um, HTC, their stock price is down because phone sales for HTC are way down. Uh, Samsung basically owns large part of the cell phone market, and HTC is uh, struggling. Uh, so VR is now their main focus. They are pivoting from being a uh, phone company to being very much focused on VR. What else has happened? On January 6th, Oculus opened pre-orders for the Rift at 599 US, and they're shipping starting on March 28th, which is still technically Q1 2016. <laughs> Barely, but they made it. Uh, and it's now back ordered until July, August, but you may see it in stores sooner than that. So what's happened this past week? Well, HTC announced the buy pricing, $7.99, which is very competitive because it includes motion controllers. So you have your hands with you in VR. Oculus is not going to have that for many more months to come, and it'll be an extra cost option, probably around $200. So cost-wise, they're very, very close. Uh, Samsung announced that any uh, one who orders a, an S7 phone, their new flagship phone, will get a free Gear VR included with it. So that will dramatically increase the install base of Gear VRs. Uh, Mattel has announced an upgraded version of their Viewmaster VR. The first one was so successful that barely a year later they're going to have a new version that has uh, better features and so on. Uh, LG announced a crappy uh, <laughs> VR headset. Um, I'm sorry, but it's true. All the specs are terrible. Uh, it has a very clever design. Implementation is not good. Uh, as well as consumer uh, 360 camera. And Acer keeps saying they have something big in the works. That's kind of what's happening this week. What's next? Uh, February 29th, six days from now, uh, pre-order is open for the HTC Vive. Uh, March 28th, one month later, the first consumer rifts begin to ship. Mid-April, the rift is in stores. Mid-April, the Vive starts shipping. May is the Google I.O. conference. Lots of VR announcements coming there. Uh, June or July, PlayStation VR. Later this year, Touch, and then LG, Acer, and others. So right in the next few weeks, a tremendous amount of stuff is going to be happening. <coughs> so what does the future hold? Six months from now, I predict most people will have heard about VR. One year from now, most people will know someone who uses VR regularly. In fact, all of you know someone <laughs> who uses VR regularly. Uh, three years from now, most people will have tried VR themselves. Five years from now, most people will have some sort of VR system of their own. Seven years from now, it will be the dominant medium, just like televisions, computers, and game consoles. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and I have a uh, here. Uh, most I've seen it. <laughs> 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 so, that's the presentation. Any questions? <laughs> I can watch that forever, too. So <laughs> So no questions at all. Great, excellent. Well, you, uh, you have to tell them what this means. I don't know what that basic thing is. Oh yeah, this is one of many Google Cardboard variants. Uh, the original Google Cardboard was essentially cardboard blocks with lenses. Uh, people went on to make them plastic. Somebody here has one. Yeah, if you can just hold that up so people can see it, that'd be great. Uh, that's a a uh, plastic viewer. Is that the helmet or I can't No, I grabbed it off of some. Yeah, okay. There, there are literally dozens of plastic versions of it, and some of them are extremely small and lightweight. You take this, and you put your phone into it, just like that. Yeah. And you have a very simple VR viewer you can take with you literally anywhere. It folds up. I'm not sure how that works. Just fold the tube into the middle. There, we go. there you go. Now it's fashionable. <laughs>
So yeah, Google Cardboard is going to be uh, very, if people always ask me, is it going to be the Vive or the Rift, what's going to dominate the market? And I say, <coughs> Google. Whatever Google comes up with is likely to be the major major player down the road. Yes? What do you see in the augmented reality space? Not much yet. Um, there are sort of three big players right now. Microsoft has their HoloLens. Uh, there's a Meta. They just announced their new version and they were showing it off at a TED conference, I think it was, a couple of weeks ago. And there's, um, I'm blanking the name of Magic the Magic League. Magic League, thank you very much. Uh, HoloLens uh, has a very narrow field of view. Very narrow field of view. 30 degrees horizontal, 17 vertical. So that's tiny. <coughs> and that's a limitation of the technology they're using. It's not like, oh yeah, yeah, they'll expand that soon. I don't think they can. I think they're limited to that, that kind of very small augmented window. <laughs> and their SDK, their their prototype unit, three thousand dollars, and no plans to do a consumer version anytime soon. So that's HoloLens. <coughs> Meta. Um, I have the early. I've seen the early version of the Meta. We have one here actually somewhere. The early version somewhere, um, which says a lot, right? We have all this cool tech here. Where's the Meta? Oh, it's in the closet, right? It's not great. Uh, the new one is supposedly a lot better, but again, a lot more expensive. Um, and then the Magic Leap is supposed to be the one to watch. <coughs> it um, sounds amazing. Too good to be true. I think it may be too good to be true. It's all talk, no show. Pardon? It's all talk, no show. That's so far it has been. Um, actually, I want to say no, all talk, no show. They did kind of a show. Have you seen their TED Talk? It was a show, right. complete with like dancing bears, <laughs> a guy in an astronaut suit, and it's like it was surreal and said absolutely nothing about the product. So, do they have something real? I don't know. Um, I haven't seen it. I don't know personally anyone who does. But they've raised billions of dollars in investment. So presumably they have something in the house. They're showing to people to get them to part with the harder cash, right, and uh, and keep the hype train going. If they're successful, they will dominate the market. Uh, I'm just a little bit dubious. <laughs> Who's the tile purchased by Apple? The tile purchased. The tile was purchased by Apple. Um, uh, somebody bought Euphoria from Qualcomm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All the AR companies are being bought up. So a hand there. There's another player, Cast AR. Cast AR. Called Illusions. <coughs> Demo that and some of the first hologram in October. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, it projects. It has two projectors and it's got <coughs> shutters in the lenses so you can see out. It's like wearing glasses, not being able to see and walk around. It's really cool. What they do is they have a retro reflective material. Yes. So anything that shines on from any angle gets reflected right back at that same angle. So you can look at this material and 10 people can be looking at the same piece of material, all see something different because it's being projected from their head on display inwards and back again, and they get stereo by doing the, the shutter glasses. They're a spin off from Valve as well, by the way. Yes. What about yeah. Sulon? Sulon technology. Sulon out of Toronto, just north of Toronto. I think they're like Martin? Yeah. Mark? Um, I'm a little dubious of them too. Here's why. Uh, I went to a, I drove into Toronto in the middle of a blizzard to go to a Unity meetup where they were going to be showing the Sulon Cortex, their head on display. Great, and then what they were showing was a non-functioning plastic mock-up. No lenses, no electronics, no nothing. But they said, oh, if you want to see the real thing, come to our office as a market, give us a call. Next day, I give them a call, say, I'd like to do that. They say, oh, gosh, you know, now's not a good time. We're really busy. We're getting ready for a conference, you know. And I'm going, yeah, OK. And I don't know anyone who's seen it. We did We did And? What did you think? I don't know. It worked well at the time. Good. That How was a year ago. ago. So why aren't they showing it to people? Like they did, showed it at CES. Did they this year? Yeah. Okay. Last year, yeah. Okay. A year ago. A year, yeah, ago. A year ago. And why aren't they yeah. showing it at, at other stuff? It's a mystery. It is. Exciting. It's one of two Canadian uh, VR headsets, though. The other one being uh, the Vervana Tori. We drive much real. Yeah. Well. I don't want to be biased or anything, but I, I came here because I uh, work for a VR company and AR as well. Um, they've been in, uh, let's say, stealth mode for the past 12 years. They just kind of came out of the shell. Um, honestly, this may like be like, news to you, but they have a 60 degree field of view. Do both AR and VR in a single headset with 
air controls as well. They wrote the book on, uh, on their technology. Um, the US Army actually said that it was impossible what they were doing. And they finally, after 12 years, got it right, and they're freaked out now. So um, <laughs> if you guys want some more information, I, I actually do have a, uh, a little slideshow. <coughs> Obviously, I'm not able to give it to anyone, but I could show it to you guys, and maybe that could spark your... Uh, Canadian your company? company? No, it's based out of Detroit, Michigan. Oh, OK. Yeah. Do, they, do they have a website? Yes, they do. It's IMI. It's called IMI. Mm -hmm. IMI.com. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So what can you tell us about? Yeah. Uh, I can show you some stuff. I don't know. Um, yeah. well, I could tell you. Uh, <laughs> You yeah, a USB or what do you have? Sorry, um, so my, I literally email on my phone just the slides. We can pull up the website. Though. So we all have to prime around your phone? No, I can bring it up on the screen. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why not? Why not? Do it. Okay. Um, I'll tell you a bit before I, I do this. Um, so my name is Daniel. Um, I'm at University of Waterloo. Um, I guess I'm in the arts and business program there. I just happened to stumble upon this company through networking, which I love. And I did it. I aided them in. Uh, in a bit in let's say strategic investment, strategic partnerships, they've talked to you know the big players out there. People are kind of freaked out about what they've been doing. Um, there's no really real marketing to their company yet because you know there's a bunch of tech geeks that are making this product, right? So um, the CEO is a very very cool guy. This product got created because he was trying to help from a healthcare perspective his um, colleagues and friends that were suffering from addictions. So he created a headset that um, started with this, and it's um, for it was something huge. What I can tell you is that this headset does not use a screen. It is not a fake, what I like to call a face brick. It's not a screen that like, is superimposed kind of like, you know, a bit farther. It uses what, what I would say as natural vision. They, they have a patented technology. Um, what this is, is in the nice label terms, um, this uh, technology literally just takes light, bounces off a few mirrors, and back into your retinas. So it is human, um, there are pillars that they like to, uh, to really, really focus on are human safety, human comfort, eye safety and eye comfort, that can be used for hours upon hours on end in military grade um, kind of scenarios and have no discomfort or no problems from a legal perspective or from a technology perspective. So they're, after a few revisions, their final consumer product is going to be made this March 13th. I'm gonna get a hold of one in the coming days after that, bring it to Waterloo and everyone can see it. Um, Yay! <laughs> Cool. Um, I just go to the website. You can kind of see a bit more. So if you want to play this video for you, why not? Uh, do we have speakers today? Oh, okay, speakers. Is there any video, any uh, audio at all? Uh, what's that? Yeah, sorry for ruining the entire party. <laughs> 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 really excited about that. And we are um, actively pursuing and looking for content creators and content developers to kickstart the process when it comes to just getting it, getting this thing out there. Um, again, they are in talks with major, major players in the game. People are kind of have seen this. Are, have been very freaked out in, in a good way um, because you know their their technology was theoret just theoretical only months ago, and they finally got it right. So it's pretty cool. Can you just talk to me? I just want to see if there is some. Uh, so, do you have any questions that I can answer? I'm not very technical, but I can. Yeah. So, because of how your system is made, is it good for the viewer kind of from to nausea? From yes. Your so, I'll tell you a bit more about their technology as well. So, from the virtual reality perspective, um, they have they actually. Oh, they actually have um, this very cool technology. So for instance, when you're on the water and you get really seasick, you're going to be looking at the horizon. That's the normal way of doing things to so pretty much bring your, um, yourself back to reality. And people that are kind of cut off from reality, some people, about 10% of people who kind of have a panic attack and they're not, they don't have a kind of a pinpoint to back to reality. What they can do with this product does <coughs> is from the VR perspective, um, it's able to pretty much close you off up to a certain amount. So you can make it 99% um, pretty much uh, black, you can make that 1%, just that 1% that you can see through could, make, could bring you at ease. You can bring it down even to 98% or 97%, depending on where you want to be at. Um, from the AR perspective, it's the only product in the market that could do hard AR. So I'm talking about me moving, and for instance, you moving, and you having an object on your head, and that thing staying on your head at the exact same time. So we're all moving at the exact same time together. Um, it's pretty pretty crazy and revolutionary. Do you think it's working? Well, try it. <laughs> I've been working on the ME for almost 10 years now. It's taken a tremendous amount of work to perfect this device. 
price to a point that I felt it was ready to present to the world. So I might ask, why would anybody work 10 years to protect something like this? I find it personally important to, to be part of creating a tool that is going to enhance everybody's lives. This is a new platform. This is a whole new world that's opening up.